Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a reel that Peter brought me. It's a uh, Pen 450 SSG. It's uh, a spin fisher and it's, uh, it's making a lot of noise. So he had asked me to take a look at it and that's exactly what we'll do on this video. Hopefully it's something that can be repaired. If not, uh, we'll uh, explain to you what the next steps are and if I have to order parts we'll come back and put it back together again. But uh, let's start by taking this apart. It seems like um, it's uh, the gear's not meshing properly but uh, let's go ahead and uh, take the spool off. We'll do that by removing the drag knob and then the spool and I like to do it that way because we'll see if the noise happens to be in the spool. We can also pull a little bit on your axle shaft uh, we still got the noise, so there's something that's either out of balance or um, or working against us there. Let's go take the handle off then. And the handle simply is a clockwise turn. And I'm noticing as we're doing this that this plate seems loose. Yeah, it is playing the plate. So it may just simply be that uh, this plate just needs to be tightened. We'll see. Um, you know, that yeah, these screws aren't set. Neither is that one. Yeah, so this is interesting. You know, I see this occasionally. If you use these on boats, the uh, vibration of the boat will often uh, loosen up the screws. And if you're not paying attention to it, um, you can be in a situation similar to what we've got here. So let's just uh, let's go do the internal check on this. We'll take the whole reel apart and we'll service it while we're at it. But it may just be that. But it may also be that quite a bit of damage could have been caused by continuing to use this reel. Uh, with that loose side plate and with the gears that are not meshing properly. And um, if that's the case, it may need to be that uh, the gears need to be replaced at this point. So if you're out on boats, there's a lot of engine vibration that goes on on, this, on the boats, particularly if you're storing your, your fishing reels on the rail in a rod holder or something. And uh, these screws are not uh, set in there with Loctite or any other kind of glues to hold them in. And the reason for that is if you if you use that Loctite, uh, and now I'm referring to the red Loctite, uh, although the blue uh, you know, can be worked a little bit better, uh, what will happen is, is that the, um, if you're not using a Loctite, if you use a Loctite, you're going to lock them in, you won't be able to get them out. If you are not using the Loctite, they can shake free. And particularly these, these are uh, threaded screws as opposed to, to some of the other screws there. So, so this is the internal look at the uh, 450 SSG. It has the um, bearing in the side plate, then we have an, another little, um, we have the main gear, we have the axle shaft behind it, and the gearing behind that. So I'm just spinning it now, and it seems to be spinning okay. So I think we may just be on to, to some loose... Uh, side plate stuff, but let's go ahead and do the service on it and we'll see uh, what goes from there. So the first thing you want to do in terms of service after you remove the side plate is to take take the axle off so that we can remove the main gear. Again, we're going to check for damage because this thing was was pretty wobbly there. We want to make, make sure that the, uh, the, the teeth aren't worn. I just had one of those screws just pop on my floor. It's not an uncommon occurrence, but I do like to keep a mat on my floor so that I can see uh, where those pieces fall. Obviously, if you're doing this in, in a work area that may have a, uh, a, a rug or something, it'd be very difficult. In my case, I have a plastic desk uh, chair roller mat on it uh, to, to hold those. So we're going to just put this reel down for a second, find that screw. And that was easy enough to pick up. And as you notice, all of my screws are going into a parts tray so that uh, I can just simply reach in there to grab them when we're done. Okay, so the, uh, the tie down for the axle into the cross, uh, cross wind block has been removed. We can now pull the axle shaft up. Once we pull the axle shaft up, we can pull the main gear out. And now I'm checking for wear because there was a lot of a lot of noise there. We'll go take a uh, cotton swab, just get some of the grease off of this. 
so that we can see what, what in the world's going on here. It looks like we're okay. You want to check two ways. You want to check visibly this way, and then you want to check from the side, make sure that all of the teeth are uniform and uh, that there's no scarring or broken teeth there. And these seem to be all right in that regard. And then I'm just going to take a little wire brush. In this case, it happens to be a cloth wire brush. I'm just going to clean out the stuff in the channels. Because it is quite possible that some sand or something else got lodged in there and that would cause a noise as well. But uh, I'm thinking right now that we just had a loose side plate. And I'm just going to do that to the back as well. This one drives the cross wind gear. And I'm just checking to make sure that all of those teeth are okay as well. Into the bucket we go with that. Okay, so now we got the cross wind block. We're going to pull that. This is a service now. This, uh, this wouldn't be a cause for the noise. But we're going to make sure that this is clean. I'm going to wipe off the old grease with a paper towel. Make sure that there's no chips or breaks in that. And then we can go to the cross wind block, which is below. And we should be able to pull that out. If you can't pull it out, I always use a, a little needle nose pliers or something else to grab it. And again, we're just checking behind, making sure that this is okay. And we're going to check the teeth as well while we're at it, which is why I turned it upside down. We want to make sure all the teeth are okay on both sides and that it's clean. So this is all right. So I think what we wound up with there then is the uh, uh, that the side plate was loose, interestingly enough. Yeah, I don't see that a lot, but again, it can happen. We're going to take the, uh, the top off now. Looking, that should be a 14 millimeter wrench. Just uh, have them all scattered in front of me here, but it's never the, never the one that you put your hands on. Nope, it's a 13 millimeter wrench. Okay. That's why I like to keep all of the, the tools nearby, because if you miss with one, it's uh, the other one's right there. You don't have to lay it down and go try to find it somewhere. It's uh, with the in arm's reach, and you can keep your hands on the reel like I have here. Uh, make sure that uh, you don't lose any pieces and parts. All right, that one came off the traditional way, counterclockwise. We should then be able to remove the uh, the rotor. This one's being a little stubborn. Sometimes it. There we go. We got the rotor off. And there's nothing going on here. There's just an in. in uh, an anti-reverse burring on this side and the burring underneath. We don't have to take this assembly off if we needed to. We could by removing the three of these. And we might as well. We, uh, we're we showing you how this whole wheel comes together. We might as well take it off and lube the burring from the top. You can re lube the burring from the bottom, uh, but uh, there's a collar here if you needed to service the anti-reverse bearing, so we'll go ahead and take that off as well. I'm just backing these screws off. I'm trying to keep the, the screws in the assembly just because I'm showing this as opposed to, to really needing to do anything with this. And then once you pull that off, that's oh, probably not true on that. I didn't get them all, out, all the way out. Once you get those off, you can pull the uh, pinion gear out as well. Should be fine now. No, nope, I'm still still stuck on one here. It looks like. There we go. Nope, stuck on one more. So just be patient when you do the real repair. There's no rush. There's, this isn't a speed contest. And from time to time, I feel like I'm under pressure from uh, trying to do something with uh, the video. But if you just bear with me, you usually get the right answer. So this is the way the stack comes out, and this is your, your pinion gear. Nice, appears to be brass, nice. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing we just did with the main gears. We're gonna check the teeth. Again, we had a grinding in these gears, so we wanna make sure that the, the flow of the teeth in these gears is, is right. We then had a, uh, a bearing, we put the bearing back on. That can go in then. It's been cleaned, put a 
Help the dish of oil on that. Let that soak in there. Now we've got the anti-reverse. I'm just going to check that. It's clean. Well, I'm going to just throw a little bit of oil onto the anti-reverse as well while we're at it. And this sits underneath. We saw that. It goes into the, the carrier here. And I encourage everybody to take pictures along the way. Uh, here's a good example of this. There's two, there's three screws, but they're not uh, triangular or, or equal distant in nature. These two are closer than that one. There's a tab on this which sits over the trip lever here. You just want to note that orientation uh, as you take it off. So if you get confused or if you can't figure out that that's the way it went, you can always go back to the pictures you took and, uh, and get your reset your bearings, so to speak. All right, so we're just going to put these back in then. This uh, upper part of the reel looks fine. Everything looks fine. So my guess is going to be that over the course of the use of this reel, it was probably on a boat. It shook free. Uh, the side plate uh, came loose. That caused the main gear to have slop in it. And when that main gear had slop in it, it caused the, uh, the malperformance of the reel. So we're, that's our hypothesis. We still haven't proven that. We haven't put it back together yet. But that's what the thinking is at the moment. Okay, so then we're going to just put the, the fur all over the top of this. That seats in there. We're going to go restore the, the rotor. There's that little square. And this is the value of this parts tray. You know where to look for this stuff. You don't have to go far to find it. So we're just getting the little washer there that belongs there, and then our 13 millimeter nut and because we know that it came off in a counterclockwise we know that it goes on in a clockwise or a more traditional threading but again some uh, some manufacturers use a reverse threading on these so if you're finding that you're working on the reel and and you seem to be putting a lot of pressure on it to take that uh, that nut off but it's not uh, moving then try going the reverse way it's not the 13 millimeter Now sometimes a reel like this, you might want to use a ratchet uh, as opposed to the the open face here. I'm having a little bit of trouble grabbing the, the nut. I am grabbing it, which is fine, but if you're having trouble, a ratchet uh, socket wrench uh, would probably be better. In this case, I'm, uh, I'm managing to do it, but uh, if you needed to, you have that, uh, that counterweight there, so... Uh, Okay, so that's spinning freely. There's no noise and no issue with the top end. So let's go uh, throw some oil onto the back bearing then. Let's restore the reel and let's see what we got. So we took the uh, cross wind block off. We're going to go grab our reel grease. In this case, it's a pen precision reel grease. It happens to be a pen reel, that's fine, but uh, it doesn't need to be pen precision reel grease to do it. It just needs to be a fishing reel grease. We're just going to put some on there. I'm not going to overload it, but we will put enough on there that it is lubricated as it, uh, it sits in here. Back to the main gear then. Uh, that goes next. I'm going to put a little bit onto the, the teeth that drive the cross wind block and a little bit back into the teeth we just cleaned. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease back up onto the pinion gear. And that'll all work its way in pretty easily and pretty quickly with the couple of revolutions of the reel so you don't have to, to get it in every tooth hole there all right we can then put the seat that main gear in now we got to put that cross wind block in and you should remember the orientation on this one it, it, this one did sit this way but it's real easy to flip this over so again make a note of it when you're taking this off what the direction of it is and if you don't remember, uh, take pictures. Okay, that's the easiest thing to do. All right, back to a little bit of grease on uh, both the faceplate as well as a little bit in the channel. You don't want to overload the channel, but uh, just enough there. And we can see the, the cross wind block over the stud. We'll come up on this. We want to clean this off. We just took the, the axle shaft and uh, put it in the basket right away, but there is some some stuff on there, so let's take that off. A light coating, very light, and you'll notice I'm using a, uh, a latex glove on my hand. This is a good way to, 
to use the latex glove as a tool just to uh, to run that up and down there to make sure that you have the, uh, the grease evenly spread. And you don't want to put too much in there because if you put too much in there it's only going to uh, run out when you put it through. So you just want to slide that in there. Then we want to go for our cross block uh, brace or whatever this little piece is called. We're going to put that back in there. That's going to enable us to tie the shaft into the cross block so it doesn't slip. And we go into our parts tray and we find those two little screws that belong in there. And if you're having trouble with these like I do, uh, just make sure that uh, you take your time and, and use your patience. There's no rush on these. So if, uh, if you were coming along with this and you, you're having trouble figuring out which pieces and parts belong in there, the last, uh, last attempt at this is usually to use a schematic, right? You can, you can find those at, uh, on various websites, but get the schematic for the reel if you, if you didn't remember where those screws went or which ones went in which holes because as, as you know I use that parts tray there and that parts tray has a lot of different screws in it and you might wind up trying to put a, a side plate screw into uh, the cross wind block or something um, but regardless uh, the, you can usually identify that through a manufacturer's schematic. Okay so in this case I got lucky and then we'll give, the, give this reel a spin after we put this in, just to make sure that all the pieces are working properly. And uh, we'll see what we get out of that. We got a nice spin now. So I'm not hearing that grind that we started the, uh, the, the video with, so I think we've got it. We'll know soon enough. Last piece is this uh, side plate. We're going to put, uh, put some oil on the bearing there. I use oil on the bearings. I don't use grease, uh, particularly if these reels are used in salt water. Uh, Grease tends to trap contaminants, so I go with the oils. Some folks use the grease, they come from the factory with the grease. Uh, but I think if you're servicing your reels on a regular basis, which to me is uh, at the end of the season or the beginning of the next season, uh, but at least once a year, then uh, if you're doing that, then I think you're fine with the grease. And of course, if you're fishing these reels heavily and you find that uh, you got a little deterioration in performance, go ahead and service it at that point. You may Maybe that you got some sand in the reel or uh, the grease that you were using dried out prematurely or what have you. Go ahead and uh, take it out of mid-season and uh, it only takes a few minutes as you can see from this video. I'm guessing this video won't run more than 20 or 22 minutes. That's what it takes you to, to service a reel. It's well worth it to keep your reel in top shape to go spend that 20 minutes doing that. So I'm, I'm kind of skipping around on these screws here as you're noticing. Some folks like to use mechanical screwdrivers. I don't, and I don't recommend it. Um, but uh, I, I don't like it because of the way that it torques down on the, uh, the reel itself. Uh, and I've seen side plates that have uh, been uh, become stuck. And um, you know, we're going we're gonna to look at the, uh, the drives. It just occurred to me that uh, as I was looking down on this stack that we haven't done that. Uh, since we're, we're doing this whole reel, we might as well go in and check the, the drag stack as well. Now that's held in by a retainer clip. You can see that it's a C-clip. Yeah, you usually have to work something in behind it to get it to come out. It is a spring, so be careful with that. It will shoot. And then I just like to take them out, just uh, keeping the order together on these. There's one more in here that's the bottom one. Nope, that's part of the screen. Okay, so these come out. There's, uh, I think there's seven of them, six of them. So you have a, a regular drag washer, metal round, then you have a regular fabric drag washer, then you have a hex, uh, hexagonal one, <laughs> six sided, and then you have the third of the fabric, and then the last one up top. And these should get dry grease. These are, uh, the HT100s are the basic pen, so you use the drag grease to keep them flexible. And you don't want to go crazy, not too much, but a little bit. And again, use that uh, use that glove hand of yours to uh, to set these. If you lost the order on them, the order tends to be uh, with an eared washer or some other kind of uh, fixed washer in the middle of all of these drag stacks. Sometimes you'll work on a Shimano or something that'll have more than uh, 
and its fair share of drags and it'll have two of them. So note the location and again if you get stuck go back to that schematic. That schematic will show you where the uh, where they belong in the sequence. Alright and then this one just has a little bit of stuff on it so I'm going to go back to that uh, paper towel there and just clean that off. If it was some kind of grime or something you couldn't clean off with a paper towel then go ahead and use a uh, a little bit of steel wool or a kitchen scrubby or something. All right, that's as simple as it gets for drag stacks, and then we want to put the retainer clip back in there. Now there's a, there's a groove that it sits in, so make sure that it snaps into that groove as such, and that piece is done. And then we've got this little braid that's kind of hanging around here, but we'll get through that. Here's your drag knob that goes on next. We're not, uh, not set on it. There we go. Alright, so this uh, it seems to be the fault of a loose side plate that would, speculation would have it that it was on a boat and then it uh, has been on the boat all season or something and that that's what caused the, uh, the vibrations of the engine and that the regular seas uh, caused that to uh, shake free and uh, loosen up and once it loosened up then uh, the, it caused the play in the side gear uh, in the main gear so just uh, trying to put this back together again it's uh, got to get started properly there you go all right let's see what we got well, we got a whole lot better performance than we did there's a little roughness in there it's not terrible but uh, it's not factory but it's certainly spinning the way it should be spinning my guess is that the the teeth on that main gear probably did dull from the use while it was uh, working itself free, but uh, you know uh, it can certainly be used. That's all right. We're good there. I'm just going to throw a drop of oil onto the the bearing here that uh, is the line roller. So a drop of oil behind the uh, the two posts for the bearing. I'll just flip it a couple of times to work it in. So we're good to go. So we'll get this back to Peter and he can go take a fishing and hopefully you can catch some of those striped bass that are just starting to hit now up in the uh, east coast here. All right, with that, that's how you, uh, you take apart, you problem diagnose and you repair a Spin Fisher 450 SSG. I hope you've enjoyed that. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.